up, what up, what up? It's your boy Ocean. This is Ocean's View. Already know who in the building. Willie Negro. What up, what up, what up, what up? I knew it was coming out at some point um, because they've been hitting at it for years. Um, I'm not really shocked what I'm about to say because this is what she kind of does. She she takes advantage of a situation and turns it into um, a show that's going to wind up on somebody's network one way or another. So I don't see why this would be any different. Um, we know where Shawnee O'Neal, but she's married now. She's married. So I think no, that she's she, always going to be Shawnee O'Neal. That's the that's the perks of marrying Shaq. Same with, I guess, Mrs. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Well, now nah, Juanita's Juanita now. She's mm-hmm. Juanita back to her regular name <laughs> because he, he remarried and that chick probably ain't letting her run around talking about she's Mrs. Jordan either. But people still going to know where is that. Yeah. But for a lack of not knowing, let's not think, I need to find out what Shawnee O'Neal's real name is now. Matter of fact, you know, it's crazy because they don't even say it's Shawnee O'Neal. Henderson. Well, huh. That would be her last name. Shawnee, it still says Shawnee O'Neal. Well, did she, her kid's last name is her kid's last name is O'Neal, so she might keep her kid's last name. We've had this talk before. We know what that's about, but mm-hmm. Shaq's involved, so I get it. Shaq and the checks and everything that comes along with it. She says she might not. She doesn't know if she was ever in love with Shaq. Mm-hmm. Are you buying it or is it cap? Um, I'll I'll buy it. But if you know, you might be able to convince me otherwise. But I'll buy it because I listen. Shaq is a big personality. I think she uh, loved Shaq, but you know. Whenever you have, um, whenever you have people with money, you fall in love with a lifestyle, and then you get married, you fall in love with with the idea of your life. And if you if, if you really see how she was explaining it, that's how she was explaining it. She was kind of in love with like she liked going on the trips with him when the, the NBA trips. Uh, she liked having the family unit and and, and stuff like that, but. I don't know if she was ever in love like that with him. She she loved him. Obviously, she gave him kids. But, you know, I, I'll buy it. You know what I mean? Um, I believe, of course, quite naturally, she loves him. Yes. Um, the in love part, it might have been a small window at best, maybe. I, I think she was at one point was probably in love with him. Now... There's a lot that come along with these professional athletes. Yeah. And, you know, women always like to talk about the security that they're looking for in a relationship and all that. The first security you get when you're dealing with, we not to talk about just a plain old athlete, like a Shaq type yeah. of megastar. That's all the financial stability you're going to need unless somebody is just going to be ruining their money. And mm-hmm. when you're... You have to work overtime to ruin that kind of money. Right. Or whatever. And he had kids. He has kids with a whole family and everything. I don't think Shaq has no kids like outside of her mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, first of all, that would have been came out. I'm not. I'm going to go for it because that would have been came out. So as far as we know, she's got all his kids. Mm. And um, Shaq being who he is, a 6'2 dude trapped in a 7'4 body, 7'3 body mm. or whatever. Um, you know, he's going to have... Friends on the road. He's going to have ladies in each state. Now, it's not about accepting infidelities because I'm not even going there with it. But, like you said, it's a lifestyle that we hear about this lifestyle, but these people have actually lived it. So, to to sit up there and and knowing there's no limit to what you can buy, you know what I'm saying, or no limit to what you can do. It's a different feeling. Like, I know we like to always talk about what we won't do for money or mm-hmm. if I had this kind of money, um, which, what what I will do and what I won't do. You don't know until you actually have your finger on the post of that. That's like Brad Pitt and them. They was talking about how they have, like, cargo pants that cost, like, $125. Mm-hmm. First time I heard that, I was like, man, you can go to Old Navy yeah. and... <laughs> You know how much work you can do with $125 and different. But 
people like to say things like, well, even if I had um, $290 million, I still wouldn't buy. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. That's that's mm-hmm. the point. If you have 290 some million to buy $100 pants and $90 shirts that you'll never wear again. Mm-hmm. Because, see, the difference is this. When your check is like 2500 every two weeks, and no disrespect to nobody with a $2,500 check. Cause, well, first of all, I can't even have to say no disrespect because the average person ain't bringing home $2,500 right. after taxes every two weeks. You buy a few hundred dollars um, pants and then still got to pay bills, oh, you want to feel that. You know what I'm saying? That might even be People deemed, do it every day, though. People do it every day, but that might even be deemed as mm-hmm. irresponsible. Mm-hmm. But you got $290 million and you don't spend $100 on your jeans the problem is you. You see what I'm saying? Things like that. So I say all that to say, I don't think, I think they, I think Shaq and Shawnee had an understanding for quite some time. I got to believe that they did. Mm. I don't, I don't think he snuck around on her. I don't think. I do. I, I think he did. I think he snuck around on her. I think that he was very much in love with her. But I think he was young and he had women on the side and he was bigger than life, uh, had a bigger than life personality. And I felt uh, that it was arrogance. He felt like he can have his family and his women on the side. Um, As for her, the real question is, do we kill her for marrying somebody that she's not in love with? Um, That's, That's the question. I don't think we need to kill her because people do Does it all the time. Does she get any criticism? Um, to a very small degree because, once again, people deal with people on lower echelons of finances for the exact same reason. Right. And you're dealing with this dude and his BS, and excuse me, his BS, and he makes $120,000 mm-hmm. a year. That. 120000 excuse me, a year. Okay, average person is not making that. Right. Depending on how you live in your lifestyle and things like that, maybe if you're working or not, fine. Can't kill somebody that they're grossing and netting $120 million. So yes. So I'm not going to kill, like... Shawnee, was doing, Shawnee had a job. She was doing all right. You know what I mean? But the, the thing is, if you marry... Did, she married him for money? Did she um, marry him for money? Do I think she married him for money? Yeah. It definitely reeled the end. So I might have to say yes. No, I'm going to give her bail. She didn't marry him for money. She married him for security. That's money. I'm just saying, I'm, I said I was, I was going to give her some bail. That was, <laughs> that was the bail that I was trying to give her. Like security, finances, money, whatever you want to call it. I'm only saying that because it, it can be interpreted as from the way she said and the way she explained it it can be interpreted as hey I was in love with the lifestyle I was in love with the money I was in love with the fame that came along with the allure that came along marrying Shaquille O'Neal and the money that came along with marrying Shaquille O'Neal me personally the reason I don't kill her is because like you said that lifestyle can be very seductive you see what I'm saying and not not really knowing that you're in love with somebody can be hindsight. Meaning, in in the moment, this feels like love. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Shaq, for all intents and purposes, I don't know him, but he seems like a pretty nice guy, a fun guy, a guy that you would like to be around. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I can see how that mixed with his lifestyle and his money and his means to provide you with anything you want and make you feel very special can be seductive and I can see how you can feel like if he proposed to you it's hard to say no you see what I'm saying because you 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 seduced by this lifestyle and you in it and it's like I don't know if I'm in love all crazy with this guy but I like to be around him I like what he does for me I like the way I feel when I'm when I'm with him you see what I'm saying so that's why that's why I personally don't don't kill her for that. And I can understand and, and looking back in hindsight why she would feel like 
well, was I ever really in love with him in the first place? Or was I in love with the way I'm raising my family or the vacations we go on as a family or, you know, going from city to city, seeing the country with my husband? You see what I'm saying? I think that most women really just want to get married for the sake of being married. I think they're in love with a fantasy anyway. You see what I'm saying? I don't know that. I don't know that a lot of women are ready for marriage. I don't know that a lot of men are ready for marriage too, but for different reasons. But women, I think that marriage is a is is a fairy tale to them. You know what I mean? And when you get swept up into that, like 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 Shaq probably swept her up into it. I can see why you would marry that man. You see what I'm saying? It's um, it's definitely whirlwindish. Yeah. Especially when, like you said, you got the finances of a Shaq. You can have a lot of fun. Like, the world is a great place to be in. Yeah. Like I always say, when you got money, nothing's a bad idea. <laughs> it's not a bad idea because everything's feasible. Like, you're not, you're not, your wildest dreams, you're like, man, I wonder if we could do that. No, you can actually do yeah. that. You can actually do that. You don't have to think about it. And you can do it at a moment's notice. So, and this wasn't really a, too big of a deal because Shaq, it, it didn't really get any traction. Like, people were part. Other outlets were looking mm -hmm. for like an issue. Shaq, oh, you never loved me. So it was kind of how like, you feel about what Shaq said. What did he say completely? Well, Shaq was like, what did he say? He tweeted or uh, he tweeted something to the effect of, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have loved me either or something like that. You know what I mean? He he kind of shot her some bell like, I don't care what she say. I was in love with her kind of kind of thing. You know what I mean? And it would I I didn't make it easy for her to love me. Some well, the sentiment was that. Well, since it was, since it was that, and he probably was like, he probably didn't want to say back, hell, I wasn't in love with her. You know what I'm saying? Shaq like was absolutely in love with Shawnee. I don't think he was smitten. 100% he was. The way he speaks about her, she's the one that got away. All, all the time when he speaks about her. Well, he, she's the one, she's the one, she's the one that got away because. They got divorced or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, first of all, I don't think Shaq's ever getting married again. Um, because he married the one. Well, he married the one. He's not getting married again. Um, he's got everything that he's wanted. So it's like he's checked off his boxes. Mm -hmm. I got a family. All my kids are under one roof. Or, you know, they move out, whatever. But mm -hmm. one mother. He's like, what, what do I look like going out here, getting another child on the side that's not even going to grow up with his brothers and sisters or whatever like that. So Shaq's not doing that again or whatever. So, but since we're on the NBA, big baby Davis, <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's a little funny. It's, and it's more so sad that, um, big baby Davis used to play for the Celtics. Um, probably a few other teams, mm -hmm. but most notably the Celtics was did he want he was a part of the championship team he got a chip he, he was a part chip. of that he got a chip and um he defrauded no attempting to defraud the NBA's um plan I guess one of the um like either insurance plans or something mm -hmm. for 3.5 million dollars when I first heard it I was like why is he trying to defraud the NBA now 3.5 million dollars for 3.5 no but for 3.5 million for stars, which he's not, that's chump change. Now, right, but well, he's not a star. He's not a star, but I think that's one of the bigger issues as well. This is what I thought of when I saw the story. Mm -hmm. People think once you make it to professional sports, that we all up. It's like you're changing lives. Mm -hmm. Now, off top, if you grow up with your parents, you're going to change their life. Okay, that's that's kind of most people they go for. Get, get mama a house, get daddy a car, get this, whatever, for your immediate family. But the problem is, when people be going pro, it's like the whole family wants to retire and go pro now too. Because now we're up. And I think that's what, I think that's what happened with him. I think he was overextended. Now, I'm not making an excuse for what he did. What I'm mm -hmm. saying is I'm just trying to paint the picture of Every dude that goes to the NBA, NFL, I can't say MLB. Well, MLB because, you know, they got mm -hmm. the minors and stuff, the farm teams and stuff. Everybody's not making that kind of bread. 
And people's families don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. And this is the type of things that people do when they get desperate. Well, I think I think that when you hear millionaire, you automatically assume that somebody is rich, right? And I think that uh, for these young guys, when they making one, two million dollars a year, I, I think they look at this money and think the well won't dry. You see what I'm saying? So if you making, let's say you making two million dollars a year for five years, that is enough money to sustain you really for the rest of your life. If you, uh, if you live a modest life and you um, let your money work for you, you see what I'm saying? But if you get a million dollars at once, it's it's hard to live a modest life. You see what I'm saying? Especially when you're rubbing elbows with people that are that own boats and, and, and things like that. You see what I'm saying? He was on a team with Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and 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 uh and Paul Pierce. We talking three guys that, you know, made a lot of money in their career. You know what I mean? And this was the end of their career. So we talking, we talking guys that, you know, had plethora of resources. So just trying to keep up with them in general is going to make you go broke if you're making $1.5, $2.5 million a year. You see what I'm saying? And your career, you know, average career in the NBA is four or five years. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I don't know how long he played for, but it was around that, maybe a little bit more. You know what I mean? And so, you know, you do things to try to uh, compensate. You do things to try to get more money. Unfortunately, he did something that um, wasn't legal. And how much time they said they gave him? Three years? Three years, 40, um, 40 months. But the crazy thing is, it says his estimated net worth is $15 million. Something's not adding up. Something's not adding up. Um, because... You got fifteen million dollars. What are you? Net worth to doesn't mean he has fifteen million. That's what at least that's what I thought it meant. Nah, net net worth means all your assets combined is worth that. You see oh. what I'm saying? So you can have a business that's worth this amount. You can have property that's worth this amount, and you can have this amount of cash, and it all adds up to that. And from all for all intents and purposes, everybody I know. Everybody who speaks on net worth that's on the internet says it's absolutely inaccurate. You know what I mean? So, Bro, there's that. I know, for me, my net worth is whatever I got in my pocket on that <laughs> book. No, no, there, there was a time where my net worth was whatever I had in my pocket. That's what I had to my name for yeah. life. But, I, in all um, seriousness, 40 months... First of all, that'd be crazy when they be saying 40 months. I'm, mm -hmm. like, look at, I'm like, yo, judge, just say three and a half. Like, nah, because 40 months sound dumb long. But at the same time, with Big Baby Davis, I think he's made some bad investments. Because because I think at one, first off, he was selling like cell phones and stuff at hey, one man, point. You, hey, you got to do what you got to do. You got to uh, you gotta make money. You know what I mean? You you when, After the NBA, you have to do something. You see what I'm saying? And Big Baby Davis is, you know, somebody's going to recognize him if he's working down at the Target. You seen what happened to my man from the Cosby show? You know what I mean? They recognized him working, and they was trying to kill him and, until Tyler Perry started putting, putting him back and stuff, and he, he started acting again. You know what I mean? But that man had to feed his family. You know what I mean? He had to get some bread. You know what I mean? Um, Vin, Vin um, what's his name? Vin Baker. Mm -hmm. He was up in Starbucks. He was up in mm -hmm. Starbucks for a minute out there, Connecticut and everything. I'm just saying, make all the money you need to make an NBA because that's the money that you're supposed to live off for the rest of your life. Now, it sounds crazy because it's like, can you imagine, well, not us, but they, they put out there that, okay, this is all the money that you're going to have for the rest of your life. So you're in the NBA, you're in the NFL, but you have potential to make hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So, on one hand, I'm not feeling sorry for you when you go broke. 
because you could have been very up. Mm-hmm. Like, LeBron would have to concentrate to get broke. He's it's <laughs> concentrate. Gross. Like, ridiculously hard. Like, you have to just, he damn has to give his money away. Yeah, yeah LeBron, LeBron can't be broke. So, he, he can't be broke. The, we get the stars. That's why I guess you got to make it to that second contract. Well, I, I, I think it's an assumption that uh, Big Baby Davis is broke. You know what I mean? He could just be trying to hit a lick. You know what I mean? Like, he's try, trying to get up more. But did you see his um his response to getting three years? What is that? He, he, he was pretty... He was pretty much like, wow, like, yo, I promise you, I'm going to work out hard as hell when I'm in there. I'm come out looking like The Rock. He was joking about it. Like, he was ser- He was like... He wasn't like... He wasn't... He didn't present as he was phased or or mad or sad. He's like, hey, all right, I guess I got three years. I, I'll be back. He probably, that's because he probably knows where he's going. What do they call it? Yeah. Club Fed? He probably knows he's going to minimum mm-hmm. security um, joint. Got got freedom to do all kind of stuff. Conjugal visits without being married and all that. <laughs> so, Damn. nah, he's probably got that kind of thing going on there. And maybe he's just gonna do his time, and that's just that. He's probably like, "Yo, I'm not doing regular time anyway, like the rest of y'all." So that's that's what he's into. That. Mm. Um, what about the the part that there's another joint that had me questioning stuff? The guy who broke up with his girlfriend of five years mm-hmm. because her ex passed away. And she got a tattoo of his name on her. Hold on, hold on. So he was with it. He was with his girl for five years. Her ex passed away, and she got a tattoo of her ex, his name or or something or his face. I I'm gonna assume name. Go his ahead. name on her body, and then he left her. Yeah. All right. So, okay, I'm with him. I'm with him. Sorry. If I'm with you, you can't tat somebody else's, another man's name on you while I'm with you. It has to either be there before me and you have made these mistakes in your past or you can do that after me. Because as soon as I, I, hey, the man passed away. I'm not mad if you go to the funeral or none of that. But tatting him on you so he can be with you forever while you're with while me, you're with me. is wild disrespectful. That's my opinion. Yeah, I think that's every man's opinion in the world except for the 1% that, you know, women are quick to be like, you don't know every guy. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, but I think I speak for 99.8% of them when I say this one. See, the thing about having a tattoo prior to, Mm -hmm. that's already one thing. Right. Especially if those two are still in contact. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a thing. That's definitely a thing. I've experienced that before. Um, That's it. What do you mean by that's a thing? What do you mean by that? No, I mean it's a thing like if somebody's got a tattoo of somebody um, before you dealt with them, Mm -hmm. And them two are still in, um, con- in contact mm-hmm. with each other. That's a thing. Like that. That that's not the most comfortable situation either. All the time. Okay. Um, it begs the it begs the shoot towards insecurities. What? But this you not only really like the word insecurity because I believe all of us have them. Yeah. And I believe. I believe not only can you give yourself self-esteem, you can give somebody an insecurity too. Now, how they accept Absolutely. it is one way, but you can make somebody feel insecure in a situation, but yet we'll blame the person and say, why are you so insecure? It's mm-hmm. like weird. I gave you this insecurity because I didn't make you feel secure in this, so, but yet I'm killing you for being insecure about the, the thing idea that I gave security in. Yeah, but the idea of somebody, so what you're saying is you would feel a way if, and 
apparently you've you've dealt with this type of situation. If a chick was still in contact with an ex, if she had a tat of him on her, yes. What what's the difference? Like that was when they was together. But what's it? So if she was in contact with him and she didn't have the tattoo, it make a difference. Probably not, but I think the tattoo is a constant reminder. It's a constant reminder. And um, I got heroism. It's like, yo, if you're a woman, if she's, if you're not her hero, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that this dude is the hero, mm -hmm. but it gives the appearance of he's got some. First off, if they have more history than y'all two. So say y'all got a good history, but he has more history. You kind of like, damn, he kind of knows, he knows what she likes too. He he knows tricks too. He knows what to say to get a laugh out of her. He knows what, put like this, when people like to talk about the buttons that mm -hmm. can be pushed, mm -hmm. those buttons aren't always negative. You know, you know which positive buttons to push. But if somebody has an ex, that's always going to be there. You see what I'm saying? So when you first get with somebody, their ex has way more history than you. Like they know this person better than you. That don't mean that she want to be with him. That means that she has a past and they were together in that past for three, four, five years. However long they were together, they were together. Now you come into the picture and she messing with you. She like she she feeling you. And y'all been together for six months, seven months. Y'all gonna have to work up to the five, six years that they was together, but that don't mean that they don't have a history. You see what I'm saying? She already has that. You know what I mean? And yes, he knows her. He knows what 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 buttons to push. But if you wanna be with her, you're gonna have to accept that and understand that. Hey, that was her past, and she don't want that anymore. You see what I'm saying? And if you think she want that, then you probably shouldn't be with her. My thing is this. So so let's just say with your wife, mm -hmm. and you got an ex that y'all are just friends, of course, clearly. Mm -hmm. But your wife, she does, I'm not going to say she doesn't approve, because that's kind of like, it feels like childish, like, like you somebody's kid. Okay. She doesn't like that. And she kind of doesn't want y'all to be in contact. Right. Would you stop being in contact with that ex? If it, if your wife says, it makes me feel this way. Yes, I would. I don't understand. I understand being in contact with your ex. But I don't think that you have to. You see what I'm saying? So if you are... If you love or you in love with this person and that makes them feel uncomfortable, why do you have to be in contact with your ex? You don't have to. Like, you got other friends and things like that, but they don't have to be in your life. You see what I'm saying? If they have to be in your life, you have to examine that. You have to say, why does this person have to be in my life? And why would I choose this person who it obviously didn't work out with over this relationship that I really want to work. You see what I'm saying? Do you really want it to work? Then why would why would I why would I hold on to that? If that makes you feel uncomfortable, then I'm not going to do that. You see what I'm saying? I, it's my ex. You know what I mean? Now we're not talking about like family or my mom or my brother or something like that or my you know what I mean? Like I'm going to, you know, that's my family, but my ex is my ex. She she can go. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. What about you? Um, I'm. I actually would feel a way if the contact is constant. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's every now and again, mm -hmm. you kind of ain't paying that stuff no attention. Mm -hmm. But if it's kind of constant or constant enough, I think that's an issue. I think it needs to be addressed. And I think I think if somebody comes, my thing is if somebody comes to you, if your partner comes to you and say, this is how it makes me feel, right. and you still choose to be like, well, you got to deal with it, okay, fine. To me, 
the more that conversation that, that goes, it starts to sound more like an ultimatum. Mm-hmm. And when you throw them ultimatums, I'm definitely going for the latter. I don't care what it is. It, yo, it's this or die. Here lies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's just that. Like, I'm not. I'm like, what? Yeah. Make me do that? I, yeah, I, but I feel like, I feel like that's a reasonable request. It, to stop speaking to your ex is a reasonable request. Like, if you come to me and say, well, hanging out with your brother makes me feel some type of way. Like, this is my brother. What are we talking about? Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or, look, I don't like it when you go to your mom's house. Uh, well, then you're just not going to like it. Because I'm going to see my mom. You see what I'm saying? But if you say, hey, it makes me feel some type of way when you speak to your ex. Or you, why do you always have to speak to your ex? That makes me feel some type of way. Okay, I, I then I won't. Speak to Max. That's that's reasonable request. Like that's almost that's the same thing to me as when 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 chicks be like, "Yo, why are you liking them pictures on Instagram and make me feel some type of way?" I feel like that's silly. Like because I like the picture on Instagram, but I also feel like if it makes you feel some type of way, I just won't do it. I don't have to like pictures on Instagram. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I don't I don't got to do that. Even though I think it's silly that you feel this way. I do acknowledge that you feel this way, though. You see what I'm saying? And I don't have to do that. So why am I just going to be... What, what point am I proving by still doing it? You know what I mean? You brought up you brought up social media. Guys and women have two different feelings on it. Mm-hmm. A woman's feeling on the double tap is... Well, it's like they make it look like it's a deeper meaning behind it. Yes. Guys, most, most times I double tap something, I don't read the caption... Right. I don't. It's kind of like, oh, cool picture, tap tap, and I and I mm. literally scroll to the next one. I might go on a. First off, I'm also a pity liker. Like, <laughs> if, if if you don't have a whole lot of likes on your page, I'm just going to tap just to mm-hmm. give you some more likes. Yeah. I don't even have to stand behind what you're talking about, or you, I don't even have to like the picture. Oh man, they only got ten people. Make it eleven. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Um, guys, but the thing about it is. People are hooking up more and more online. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it goes, it's, it's the reason why the song is it goes down in the DMs. Mm-hmm. Because we from the era of used to have the bag checks themselves. That means you had to yeah. beat them outside. You had to talk to them outside. You got, you got to be funny. You got to be spot on right there. But now in the DM, there's no tone. There's no fumble of your words. Yeah. Everything's gonna come out smooth. <coughs> he said. He said this. She said that. It's gonna come out smooth. Mm-hmm. But and it and it gives the transition that much more. I had a friend. Well, I still have a friend. He, him, and his wife used to do this thing. They had crushes. But this is what was wild to me, and they knew about each other's crushes. Mm. His crush was a celebrity. Her crush was a dude that we know. Oh, goodness gracious. And he knew. And this is how I found out. One day we were out chilling, us, mm-hmm. us, um, it was us four, three, three of us. And the dude walked by. Mm-hmm. And we know him. And he said, Oh, there goes your boyfriend. And I was like, What? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's I was crazy. Like, what that's is outrageous. The, I was like, What in the inside joke is this? <laughs> And he was like, nah, um, that's that's her crush. I said, let's just call him Joe. I said, Joe? Mm. I'm like, he was like, yeah. And so she was like, hold up, hold up. You're not telling the whole story. Whole story is he has a tr- he has this crush too. I don't say nothing about it. So I was like, who's your crush? This dude says, Selma Hayek. I was, <laughs> I was like, you know Selma Hayek? He was like, no. I was like, well, she knows Joe, and you know Joe. That's feasible. I that said, what? Crazy. That is not even even. That can't happen. No, sir, because you are looking at the man that's going to have sex with your wife the second that you make her mad or the second that y'all even have a break or think about getting upset with each other. This man can literally have sex with your wife. No, 
That's not okay. That's too close for comfort for me. And maybe I like when women be saying things like, um, "Well, you're just not mature enough for that." I'm like, "You're right. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like like. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that. fighting you on that. Like, you're just not mature enough. No, you're absolutely right. I'm definitely not mature enough for you to have a crush on some or one of my friends. Now, what I am mature enough for is one of my friends being your favorite person. Like, you're married to something. Oh, he can always come over to the house. He's I like him as a mm-hmm. friend for you. I bet. Yeah. I can live with that. Mm-hmm. But that's a totally different feel. Mm-hmm. But, oh, you bring your Joe over? That's like the joke with that's the Kevin Hart. That's, um, that's like the joke with Kevin Hart with um, or Mariah Carey. Mm-hmm. How he is with, well, when, he, when she was with Nick Cannon and mm-hmm. stuff. Like, he openly had a crush on her. But they was just like, whatever. <laughs> it's Kevin or whatever. But, it was because it was Kevin because he's a little dude. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying Kevin Hart don't get laid or couldn't have got laid. That ain't the case. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if Mariah is singing the same tune if that was, I don't know, Boris Kojo being like, yo, what's up? It's a diff- It's a big difference between somebody having a crush on your wife and your wife having a crush on somebody else. You know what I mean? You can like all the celebrities you want. I do know a scenario in which somebody actually met that celebrity and it went a little shaky in their relationship. But nine times out of ten, you're not going to meet the celebrity. You know what I mean? But you can't have a crush on a dude that lay down the street. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no scenario where I see that. Um, not even with a young boy. Because no. that... that, that at some point, you 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 young build, boys take down cougars all the time. Cougar takedowns, and you and you want to be on your, your oh you just a nasty milf, you know what uh. I'm saying? And you into <laughs> all that or whatever. I'm gonna like, yo, when you came up, what were you? Did you like messing with older chicks or younger chicks? Quite naturally, I don't know chicks my age. I think I was always, I might remember it on um, Baby Boy. But he was like, oh, you got to twist it. You got to twist it. You got an Oedipus complex. You want your mama to be yeah. the woman. I don't know. I might have had that. Hey, yes. oh, I'm not talking about my mother. Not my yeah, mother. yeah, yeah, yeah. But older women. Yeah. I've always been attracted to older women. I'm not talking about Marcus, darling. Not mm-hmm. that. I'm talking when I'm 20, she's like 34 or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like that. Okay. I've kind of always had a thing for older women and I don't it's just always been a thing with me now the chicks I always felt the chicks my age it was what it was like okay mm-hmm. quite naturally I would mess with yeah. somebody my age but I think well I got turned out that's for one mm-hmm. by an older chick she bagged me mm-hmm. and she wound up taking me my first one night stand I went to, she took me to a hotel yeah and it was crazy but the thing about it was, the very next week, when I seen her at another spot, she was with a dude that was around her age. Acted like she didn't know me at all. <laughs> and I was confused. Tore you up. It didn't tear me up. I was confused more so until my homeboy, who was a couple of years older than me, told me, he said, yo, she had fun that night. Um, she, she, She's 14 years older than you. Dog, that's a dude she probably really messing with. Mm. You got to fall back. She know how to get in contact with you, but do not. He was like, "Do not speak to her. Don't try to make eye contact. Mm. If she speaks to you, say what's up and you keep moving." See, but this is stuff you gotta learn. You don't know this at first because you know, guys, we can get territorial quick. And I was a young, as as y'all Philly cats say, I was a young boy at the time, and yeah. so I'm looking like, "Yo, she ain't talking to me. I have my thumb all in wherever." And this how you acting now? He was like. Yeah, this is exactly how she's acting. So, I get how those kind of things go. But I want you to talk, too, about the guy that had his hair braided on TikTok. And he had his students taking it out. Oh, yeah. He almost got fired. He almost got fired behind that, man. He, um... He's a... Come to find out, he he does stuff like this on TikTok all the time. Your teacher... And a middle school teacher and the girls was uh, taking his braids out in class. And he was 
TikTok in it. You know what I mean? And some people, I believe in the community, got a hold of it and was outraged and um and all that. And I get it. I understand. I, I, I understand the outrage. It, it it looks crazy, but I can see how it would look crazy to some people. It didn't look crazy to me because. You know, I've worked with kids. I work with kids. You see what I'm saying? They do, they do stuff like that. They do crazy stuff. And the way, um, kind of he explained it was, you know, these are my t- my students, and some of them want to do hair, some of them want to do nails, some of them wanna, they want to do all that all that stuff. And I'm involved with my students. Um, but I guess people in the community didn't feel it. He didn't lose his job. You know what I mean? But I guess people in the community wasn't feeling it. I'm people in the community. <laughs> um, I'm glad he didn't lose his job, but if I, but he can't do it anymore. He can't do it anymore. I have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. And the problem is definitely a double standard one because I've seen, I too work in education. Mm-hmm. I see girls taking out other women's hair all the time. Mm-hmm. I even see these same girls taking out their peers' hair, boys. Mm-hmm. I'm not letting no girl touch my hair, do nothing. You can't. You have to air on the side of the car. Look here, this is the reason why I have an issue with it. And it's more, I'm glad you didn't get fired, but it's more teachable moment. Mm-hmm. This is the thing about it for me, why I don't stamp it. Because, for one, it sends the wrong message. The message, I'm not saying that it's sending the message that way. My thing is this. That's sensual. When you're intimate with somebody and you got hair and stuff and they rub their fingers through your hair and stuff and it's that in the third, it's a certain feeling that comes along with that. Now, I'm not saying this guy was on some sexual tip mm-hmm. with these girls, but if we're talking freely, some of these girls look like grown women at times. We're not just talking about these two girls that was in the picture that clearly look like girls, but we work in the joint. We are careful. We are cognizant of proximity right. of how we even touch girls and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm still shoulder to shoulder with yeah. the hug with some of them. I can't say that I don't hug my um female students, but I'm I'm careful. Never front, never front forward like that. Um it's always to the side, kind of like when guys when we do that, mm-hmm. when, like down the side. Now Especially with the little kids. Mm-hmm. They're small, so it's more like, hey, how you doing, little such and such? And that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I got pulled up before because it was the end of the day. Um, a student was having a little meltdown. It was a male student. Boy, mm-hmm. hallway is full of teachers. Mm-hmm. Cameras all over in the hallway. It's, too, it's school about to be over in 10, 15 minutes. I didn't know that this boy kind of had an off day the whole day. Yeah. But I'm just trying to clear it up. We got I'm like, yo, come on, little man. We got a few more out a few more um minutes left. We got about ten minutes left. We going home. Enjoy mm-hmm. the weekend. I literally pick him up and say, Come on, man, get it together. We're gonna go back to class. And I put him down. I got pulled into the office for that. Mm. Not because the principal was on me. The mother took took exception to it. Mm-hmm. Oh, he got he started crying because you picked him up, put him in the air. Now, I was conflicted because when I go to the lower kids' floors, I'm like Superman to them. Like, mm-hmm. that's all. All them little kids, pick me up, pick me up, do that, such and such. And it always normally works, even when kids are upset. Yeah. You put them in the air, they're not upset no more. Now they're laughing about it. That's all I was trying to do. I was trying to right. get the kid to laugh and just go back to class. Because I wasn't taking them downstairs. I wasn't going to write mm-hmm. them up. I wasn't going to call the mother. Like, yo, look, here's five minutes left in the school day. Nothing's going to get fixed right now. Let him mm-hmm. go. But he started crying. The teacher called the mother to let me to, um, to let her know. We had to have a meeting with the mother. Mm-hmm. And so I say all that to say, like, when you work with kids, it's like that makes you pull back acti- activities. Now, this is what we're going to see where it's really at. Because we won't really know if he never lets his students do that again. Because if he never does well, it again, he's been warned. I'll tell you this. Go ahead. What I'll say is this. 
I will give you some pushback on the sensual stuff. As somebody who gets his hair braided, it's not sensual. I go to somebody to braid my hair. They wash it. They blow dry it. They braid it. Sometimes I go there, uh, they take it out. All that. It's nothing sensual about it. It's, they just do my hair. You see what I'm saying? Um, uh, so that's one. Uh, I think people... People look into it more than what it is sometimes. I will agree with you on this part. I'm not doing it because of the way it can be perceived, not because it's anything wrong with it. You see what I'm saying? I don't see anything wrong with it, but I do understand that the perception of it can be crazy. And, you know, I like I like my job. I love my job. So I'm not I'm not going to do it because I don't want to lose my job. He will do it again because this is what he does. He, you don't like that, you're going to look at the video of the girl uh, giving him a clear coat on his nails because she want to be a nail tech and he lets her be a nail tech. You see what I'm saying? Here's where the double standard is. He also has kids in his school that want to play professional soccer. So he stays after school and plays soccer with them. And practices with them. You see what I'm saying? He's not the coach. He just practiced with them. You see what I'm saying? What he's doing is building relationships with his students so he can teach his students. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, these are uh, black kids. He's a black teacher. He's young. You know what I mean? So this is his way of building relationships with his teacher. I think that um, it's unfortunate that we live in the world we live in today where when you see these things, they automatically get sexualized. You see what I'm saying? You see a man that's not relating to, that's not related to a female student, and anything outside of a handshake or uh, talking to them in a, as a teacher gets looked at as being sexualized. I don't think he's doing anything wrong. I do think it'll eventually get him fired, though. He's definitely been told. Don't do it anymore, because just just off of optics alone, he's been, he's been told that. So now, if he chooses to do it again, he won't get fired because he did it again. They're gonna hide behind. We told you before, so now this is clear cut defiance. Like wow. that, they'll go off. They'll go for that. He'll be considered an insubordinate. From what he from what he said, his principal knows what he does. His principal. Uh, no, has access to his TikTok. Um, he uh, is a beloved teacher at the school. Um, he uh, this, he's a good teacher at the school. So I believe he's going to do it again. I also believe that eventually the parents will get somebody will get enough to get him fired, and I I, I think it's unfortunate. But I just that's just the world we live in today. So do you think he needs to do that again? Or do you think it's an age thing where he's just gonna be so arrogant to keep doing it thinking it's sweet? I don't I don't I don't think here's my thing. I don't think he should do it again. Okay. I, but I wanna make it clear, I don't think there's anything wrong with what he's doing. I think he shouldn't do it again because I don't want that young black man to get fired. You see what I'm saying? People will perceive it as something that is not. And eventually, he will get fired. So if I was to talk to that young man, I would tell him, you're going to have to find another way to re relate and, and bond with your students. You see what I'm saying? That's what I would tell him. I think that it works for him. I think that he is arrogant. And I think that he is young. So I think that ultimately, that will be to his detriment. I, I hope not, though. We need to start embracing these double standards and stop trying to make everything like it is, like it isn't a double standard. Like all an all male daycare. I'm not sending my kids to no all male daycare. It's not happening. I don't not care either. how great they are with kids. It's just not happening. It's just not happening. And people could be like, you know, like they. One of my favorite scenes in Daddy Daycare when he was like, "So this is y'all running this." He was like, um, you don't think men could do the same job as women? He was like, um, no, we can't. 
<laughs> like men, we're more in tune of knowing. I say that's a woman thing. Yes. Women always, we can do everything y'all can do. We just as equal. Ladies, we don't run around saying we can do everything. We know it's mad stuff that y'all mm. can do that we just can't. Yeah. A slash a little bit of, I'm just not. But for the sake of it, nah, we can't do that. We're definitely not the nurturers that y'all are. Are, are can men be nurturing? Of course. But yes. we're not the nurturers that a woman is. Like mm -hmm. we see that all the time in our profession and things like that. Please. I be leaning on the kid. I had a kid and I will never say his name. He made a comment that was kind of disturbing. He says, and this is an eighth grade boy. He says, I only listen to women and my mother. And when he made this comment, he was in front of my principals, which is a woman, sister principal, which is a woman, my ED, which is a woman. I'm I'm the only man inside the room, and if you want to count him, but he's a boy, young mm -hmm. boy. When he said that comment, none of them said nothing. And I said, say that again. And he said, I only listen to women and my mother. Mm. And I simply said, and this is exactly why you this is exactly why you are the way you are. Mm. And I kind of baited him, kind of waiting for somebody to, like, give me some pushback with it. But they absolutely was quiet about it. And, you know, we spoke afterwards. Nobody hit me with the, what you mean by that? I'm like, because my thing is, if you think as a young boy coming up that you can only listen to women for your point of view on life and you think that's what's going to mm -hmm. get you through, it's not going to happen. We see a, we see a girl dressed inappropriately. Mm -hmm. We don't really say nothing all the time, but I'm definitely going to tell another woman, yo, you want to go over there and talk to her. She got a shirt all up. She mm -hmm. doing this. There's no shorts underneath there. Like, mm -hmm. she, you got to talk to like that. Guys, we don't give that pushback to women. We let women rock out. But women, oh, I can talk to them. It ain't the same. Your punishment ain't the same. Your your threat of a punishment ain't the same. That's why when they be like, yo, I'm going to tell your father, mm -hmm. they straighten up because it's totally different. It's totally different. And I just think that as like our genders, we need to let the, our genders be the, be the gender. Where do you think he got that from? Like, why would he only listen to women and his mom, though? Like, I don't... He um clearly... He has he has authority mm -hmm. issues. Clearly, with men, he has issues. Maybe I don't think his father's involved in his life. Um, I don't think the stepfather. Like men, probably haven't been the strongest thing in his life. Mm -hmm. And the mother might have went through a few men. I'm not just talking about sexually mm -hmm. nothing, but she had a few boyfriends, and it just probably never really panned out. And especially if it didn't pan out over a set amount of time. So, right. like, so if it's a uh, year is a long time, and you and you if you dealt with four different dudes in that year, that's a lot of dudes to deal with in one year. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people to sleep with in one year, but it's not a it's a lot of dudes to deal with. Wait, that's the same for the guy that is raising a daughter, but he has a revolving door of women always coming in his house. The daughter is going to pick up her own perception on how guys treat her or maybe I just need to be one of the four girls that is messing with this dude because they'll start settling for things like that. So if it's, if it's that kind of impression when it comes to things like that, the same impression comes when it's a negative um, interaction between the two. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? So it, it could be a plethora of things why he said that, but I constantly tell him like, because he says it every time he gets mad. This is why I only listen to women. And I'll be like, no, this is why you always get in trouble because your only point of view you're looking for is a woman's. And I don't want to pick on women with this. When he gets upset, guess the first thing he does? What? Folds his arm. I literally watched him fold his arm and he's sitting in the chair mm -hmm. and he starts tapping his foot. Now... I'm not a foot tapper or whatever. <laughs> I'm not a foot tapper or whatever. Um, uh, only brothers that I know that are foot tappers, they happen to be Gary Apple Yellow. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling y'all, I'm from the generation. 
it was only you were only allowed one the gay one or two gay dudes in your school, and both their names were something like Maurice or yeah, you got some chill. type of um, Sal Salvilio, like something crazy mm, that mm, sound mm. like overseas. But I'm just looking like yo. But now you'll be hard pressed to find a room of kids that aren't gay. That's the crazy thing now. Well, uh, the, the the thing is, I that might be a good thing because it was a, a lot of dudes that was gay that was just in the closet, so they wasn't being themselves. But far as that young man, I, I would tell him eventually you will listen to a man. Um, you have to. It, it's it's it, you can't escape it. We live in America. We live in in the world where you have to listen to men. We gonna we gonna have to, and I want to close it on this, but um, I'm gonna do some research, y'all. I need to find out what the closet is. I'm sorry. That is hey, that yo, always bothers me. You got to chill. I'm telling you, I got to believe. In my mind, when I hear somebody coming out the closet, I believe the first homosexual was thrown into a closet and locked in there until they decided that they needed to be straight. And I think that's where the term came from. And, yo, you coming out the closet. I got to believe it was more, it was less metaphorical and more literal. But... We're going to delve deeper into that. Probably next episode, Ocean's View. Matter of fact, no, that's not an Ocean's View joint. That's a long story short. Okay. So we're going to be back with that one. I'm Ocean. That's Billy Negro. Peace. Peace.